had a crazy, delusional, authoritarian, dangerous, criminal president of the United States. The horror and terror that this deranged president of the United States visited upon our country, Donald Trump, his character, his authoritarianism, his recklessness, his, negli his homicidal negligence, Trumpism, in all its derangement, terror, and horror. Thank you, sir. Now, show us on the doll where Trump hurt you. <laughs> oh, it's Friday night, and I'm already drunk. Or as Kat likes to call it, I've already started drinking yesterday night. Tom Shalou is with us. Hooray, I guess. Yeah. We're lucky to have him, considering how he got here tonight. Oh, he's going to do it. Oh, 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 he has a really bad back. <laughs> Hope your back's better, Tom. <laughs> so it's confusing to be a college student in America. And not just because you pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to make you stupid. I could do that for free with a hammer. <laughs> but I kid, it's tough to be in college in America. Land of the free, home of the brave, and pizza with cheese stuffed crust. Yep, if you're in college, the biggest threat are carbs. It's one place where you can cry about inequality while turning your ass into your own portable ottoman. And if anyone's mean to you, there's a campus crisis center full of fluffy pillows and emotional support llamas. Now, you could consider yourself lucky, but if you do, no one's going to agree. Clearly, America is the worst place on earth, according to their professors, who judge the whole country based off things they learn from their own professors. It's a tenured daisy chain of hate that regenerates every year, spitting another elite class of activist brats who think dyeing your hair purple is a brave political stance. So as you know, protesters in Cuba have been seen flying our American flag over the past couple of days. It's weird, right? Because it's not the Cuban flag, it's our flag. And that's like so uncool and xenophobic. <laughs> Don't the Cubans know what they're doing? They're offending our students, our professional athletes, our Olympic hammer throwers. I mean, maybe Cubans see it as a symbol of freedom, but how would they know, right? Campus Reform talked to college students around the Capitol and asked what they thought when they saw the flag. What is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of the American flag? I would say it represents like the union of all people. But like, there's clearly not a union amongst all of us. There's clearly like so many structural inequities. Honestly, kind of like what's been going on with like the country with all the riots and stuff. I think like the flag is a symbol of America, and obviously like America has done some horrible things, and like that's part of our very complex history. Shame, honestly. I felt like if I had the American flag and was associated with the American identity, I was associated with like a lot of bigotry and like a lot of racism and sexism and not stuff that I like really would like to think about the American flag symbolizing. So it's a symbol of of hurt. Um, I'm African American. Um, my family. Uh, you know, really built this country up. It's it's controversial. Wow, in 52 seconds, I counted 432 likes. <laughs> and I could feel my brain draining from me. I feel so dumb right now. I finally understand the appeal of Seth Rogen. <laughs> so the students choose to focus on the flawed past of a country that now has universal suffrage, equal protection under the law, and of course, the gut belt show. But yeah, the flag, it's probably just a piece of cloth. Do you think it represents freedom? No, I don't. Um, I don't think it's as free as people think it is, and I just think it's a piece of cloth at the end of the day. For me, no. I don't see myself represented in it, so I would not say it represents freedom to me. I think it once did, but honestly, like recently, I'm not too sure anymore, because with like everything going on, I don't know, just... I think like we once were free, but with now like there's like just new laws and like new things coming about that I don't know if that's true anymore. Yeah, like it totally. <laughs> it's like we live in a prison state. It's like Shawshank Redemption with less digging and more student loan debt. <laughs> Here's a tip. If America was oppressive, they wouldn't allow its luckiest citizens to hate it. But I get it. You see Cuban protesters cherishing something you hate. It must be hard to fathom. Why are they doing that? And why are they disappearing? 
Why do you think they're flying the American flag in these different nations? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, we don't represent a socialist government, so I don't know why they would, they would wave a flag. I'm not really sure, actually. Do you think they're waving it because it's a symbol of freedom and democracy? That could, yeah, potentially. <laughs> why do you think these people are waving the American flags overseas? Mm -hmm. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> So why would a Cuban fly an American flag if it's not their flag? Perhaps it's a desire to have the same rights we do, to vote, to protest, to sponge off mom and dad while you get high before noon. <laughs> Who knows? But I guess the flag just isn't a perfect image of equality and opportunity. Maybe they should try to fly a different flag. When looking at all these protests, seeing all these American flags, do you think there's another flag that they should be flying instead, maybe to represent more freedom or more democracy? What other country do you think they should be looking towards? Maybe like Sweden? <laughs> I don't know. Some of the um, some European countries, I think, are definitely doing equality on a on a better are doing better at equality. I'd say if like they're trying to symbolize. Oh equity then like i'd say either france or switzerland why does it have to be a, a national flag we could be flying the you know equality flag like i don't believe it has to be nationalistic i, I don't think we should put any country on a pedestal yeah is what what's the country where like e there's not even really a prison system they have like really low crime rate like what is that country oh wait a step there's a country that doesn't have a prison system sign me up <laughs> I mean, I know our liberal-run cities no longer have a prison system. They just toss the thugs back on the street. But I guess Canada is better. Yeah, Canada. They don't even have electricity. <laughs> but again, how can students make any sense when our own media and politicians are blaming America for the world's problems? Cuba is also probably Trump's fault. COVID has, on top of the Trump sanctions, cratered their economy. Should we find ways to do more for the Cuban people? and for relaxing some of the Trump restrictions on remittances. So we should ease the policy that might lead to an end to a dictatorship. How does she even find her way to work every morning? And I ask that knowing that she works from home. <laughs> of course, AOC also blames the US for the Cuban crisis and why shouldn't she? That's her brand. When she accidentally spills a glass of wine, has a cavity or can't find her belt in the morning, she blames US policy. She blames America's past and ignores commu communism's present. She's like the Nike of Congress. So, we, so should we worry when college students fail to see how our country inspires so many people around the world who aren't as lucky as these students? Let's ask the angry white male. You're a grand old flag, you're a high-flying flag, wherever in peace may you wave. You're the emblem of the land I love, the home of the free and the brave. How did he not get murdered? In sum, I suppose it's easy to poke fun at people who have taken our flag for granted. They're young, dumb, and full of terror. That's the real truth. It's not stupidity, it's fear. They know what happens if they say something counter to the approved anti-American message. You can label, censor, and cancel them at their most vulnerable. It's the perfect tool for indoctrination. So asking them about the flag, I guess you could say it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Except here, the fish would say it's preferable than to living in America. Let's wear to tonight's guest, you audience. She's got more YouTube views than cats falling off couches. Host of the Lauren Chen Show on YouTube, Lauren Chen. He's thrown more handcuffed men into the back seat than Madonna. Author Breaking Blue Sergeant Sean Sticks Larkin. He's so Catholic, he brushes his teeth with holy water. Host of the quiz show on Fox Station, Tom Shalou. Angry white man. And she's been resuscitated more times than a Red Cross mannequin. Fox News contributor, Cat Tip. Yeah. Welcome back to the show, Lauren. Great to be here. Happy. Is happy. it really great to be here? Yeah. I was joking about Canada. You do have electricity. For now, we'll see how things go with the yes. increasing, you know, encroachment of socialism. But it's good to be in America. You know, freedom in the air, growth hormones in the beef. I love it. <laughs> growth hormones in the beef. 
We have electricity, internet, plumbing in Oklahoma too, so a lot of people don't know that, but we do as well. We don't want, I don't think you should tell people that because then they'll start moving there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't want more people there. You no, want less don't. people there, fewer people. Is it less or fewer? Fewer, fewer if it's fewer. a quantifiable object. You do look like a teacher right now. Thank so you, I'll take that as a It's comment. the glasses, intelligence. Yeah. Yes. You know, Lauren, is it too easy to uh, do these kinds of man on the street stuff with students? Uh, or is it just to point out how I guess, endemic, this brainwashing is. You know, I've, I've had people say that this isn't going to be changing anybody's minds. Well, it's yeah. certainly not meant to change the students' minds, but I think the important thing to remember is that these students are not representative of everybody, and I actually kind of think it is important that the rest of America, the rest of the world, really understand how university students are really not, uh, you know, everything they're cracked up yes. to be, <laughs> at least in terms of understanding, you know, socioeconomic or geopolitical issues. Clearly, it's like that one girl, was she accidentally libertarian? Does she want Want more freedom or does she want I don't even understand I don't think she does either yeah, yeah. it's kind of sad when I but, but I always feel like maybe we're being too cruel let me try to imagine you at their age good times <laughs> yes can you remember that period I was driving a beer truck and uh, partying a lot but go ahead yep. <laughs> yes how would you have answered now you can you can doctor your 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 past how would you have answered that would you have been better or worse what would you what would you have said what would no. you like to have said uh, you, well, I think I mentioned it here before. My father was in military 32 years. My mom was active duty for 20. I was raised on military bases around the country. Uh, still to this day, having that flag on my shoulder as a police officer is always a big, big deal to me. Yeah. Um, definitely would have had a better answer than that. Yeah. What would you have said? Um, as far as, no, the American flag, I mean, it does. It represents exactly that. It's freedom. That's, that's, why, that's why the people in Cuba hop on rafts to try to get here. Nobody from the U.S. is hopping on rafts trying to get into Cuba. That's why baseball players that come into the U.S. for tournaments and things like that, they, they ask to stay here. They don't want to go back. Yeah. Um, opportunity is here, absolutely. You know, uh, it's bringing up Major League Baseball. They have not said anything about this. Aren't pro sports supposed to be political? Then there's so many Cuban baseball players and they haven't said anything, right? Not a word. No. Tom, how are you? Great. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. You look very, uh, you look very Tom Shalhoub today. Very white, very well, angry, and very male. I can't help it, Greg. I can't help it. <laughs> yes, I wish you could. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I haven't been on a college campus since I was in college. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, when I was in college, there was a few people like this. There was that one table of communists, you know, you know, in the lunchroom, and you knew about them, and they talked about this, and they held anti-Fourth of July celebrations and things like that. Now it's the majority of students, but I will have sympathy for them because they have been brainwashed since elementary school, mm -hmm. and people talk about critical race theory and the indoctrination that's going on today. Right. But the thing is, it's really been going on for 30 years. Mm -hmm. My daughter came home from elementary school and she was supposed to write a report on Columbus. Mm -hmm. And they had three choices. They said, was Columbus uh, an evil man? Was he just greedy? Or was he just a run-of-the-mill, uh, you know, bad guy? You know, it was all <laughs> bad choices. Mm -hmm. So she wrote a, a pro-Columbus report. And the teacher said, what was your source for this? And she said, PragerU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. PragerU is, for people who don't know, an online uh, thing from Dennis Prager. Yes, and it was. You really are an angry white male. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what I told her. I You're said, deep. I told her, watch <laughs> the video. And uh, she wrote a great report. But the thing is, this is what they do from a very early age. So you almost can't blame them. They've been, you know, getting this stuff. We said the Pledge of Allegiance in, when I was in grammar school many, many years ago. I remember that. Yeah. Good times. Kat? Yeah. If you have kids, would you send them to college? No. Because it seems to me like it ruins them. No, my kids are all going to go to trade school. <laughs> <laughs> I want to have plumber daughters. Um, yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. plumber daughters. Yeah, and then they're going to have a YouTube show. It's yes. all planned out. That's true. I would watch the plumber all daughter. female plumbing company. Yep, yep. Don't you take my idea. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Dump Dynasty. It's been, yeah. It, don't, there, there you go. I'm taking that. Uh, it's been really interesting to see all the, like, you know, social justice -y types 
trying to make all these different excuses for why, you know, they are really protesting in Cuba. I mean, COVID, mm -hmm. uh, the United States, right? But these protesters are being quite clear about what it is they're protesting, which yeah. is, you know, the communist dictatorship that they're living under. And what's so interesting is that many of these same social justice people are the same people who say, if you're, you know, a person of color calls you racist and you're white, you have to agree with them or else you're a double racist because yes. you don't understand. But yet they're trying to, you know, explain actually communist communism to them, the people mm -hmm. who are living under it and protesting it, it's almost as if it's a little hypocritical. I would say it's a lot hypocritical. I would agree with oh, you. Oh, you were being sarcastic, <laughs> weren't you? I, I was using, yeah. Yeah. You know what it is? I still go back to the fact that people want to be accepted by their peer groups. And right now, to be accepted by your peer group, you have to be anti-patriotic, which means the true rebels in our society are the ones who are patriotic. It's, it's us, right, people? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Way to get an applause line, Tom. Hey, I just want to be accepted by my peers. So. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Your peers are serial killers. Plumber kids. daughters are going to be very patriotic. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.